Hi. In this unit, we're going to continue the discussion of rate distortion autoencoders with something called a noisy channel RDA. Let's start by sort of reviewing where we were. We were talking about image compression, and we take a continuous signal like an image, and we compress it to a discrete compression, like a file. Uh, so I'm still thinking of the image as continuous, natural conceptual framework we're thinking about images. And I'm thinking of the compressed version as discrete. So we get this rate distortion autoencoder that's um, optimized to minimize the number of bits in the discrete encoding. And we can write that as a log probability. Um, but it's important that this is discrete. And then we have a distortion. We take our compressed version, reconstruct the image, and we get a distortion, like the L2 distortion or the root mean error. Um, and th this is what I'm going to call legitimate, um, possibly an inflammatory term, but I'm going to call this legitimate in the sense that this loss is guaranteed to be non-negative, right? That this is a standard information theoretic over a discrete space. So that's guaranteed to be, you can measure that in bits, that the number of bits is not going to go below, below zero. And this is going to be a distortion, um, expected squared difference between image pixels and reconstruct and the reconstruction. Um, and that's different from uh, differential entropy, which can be unboundedly negative. So I'm going to call it legitimate if, if we're in a space where we're guaranteed to be non-negative so that when we minimize, we're, we can minimize to zero loss, but no, no, the loss is guaranteed not to go below zero. Um, it's bounded below. So what um, noisy channel RDAs are going to be is a, a legitimate um, objective function, a legitimate optimization problem that avoids uh, quantizing to a discrete space. The problem with this quantization to a discrete space is that things become non-differentiable. So it's nice, it would be nice to have a completely differentiable objective function that is legitimate in the sense that everything's positive um, and avoids quantization. So here it is. So the basic idea, and this was used in the image compression paper we talked about in the last unit, the basic idea is that one can add noise and that adding noise to a real number is analogous to limiting its precision. So noise can play the role of limiting the amount of information that you have. If you get something plus noise, you have less information about the original than if I gave you the original. If you give me, if I get a real number that's had noise added to it, the high, you know, the high precision di uh, digits have been lost because the noise has obliterated them. So how does this play out um, in a rate distortion autoencoder? So I'm going to take a, I'm going to think of Z as like the compressed version, but really in this case, Z is just going to be something that's has a limited, a bounded amount of information about our original image Y. So I'm gonna take the original image Y or some continuous object, combine that with some noise from a fixed noise distribution. We could just add some noise to Y at every pixel, but I'm gonna let this be more general. We can take any function of a noise, some noise where the noise distribution is, is fixed independent of our parameters. Um, and then, uh, what we get when we do this is a probability distribution over Z defined by drawing Y from the population and drawing the noise from whatever the noise distribution is. So we get a distribution on Z, which is the marginal over the draw of Y. This is just the probability distribution over Z defined by this stochastic process um, where we draw Y and epsilon. Um, and you can write that as the expectation over Y drawn from the population of the probability of Z given Y. It's the same thing. It's the marginal distribution. Okay, so here's our, our machine. This is our uh, noisy channel um, rate distortion autoencoder. So it's going to minimize an expectation over drawing the image and the noise of a log of this probability ratio. This is the ratio of Z given the image. Right, so because there's noise, this is, a, this is assumed to be a continuous density. We might add Gaussian noise to Y and then we get a continuous density here. There's also a continuous density on Z, uh, average on the marginal of Z, average over all the Y. So we've replaced, 
we've replaced this discrete entropy with this log of a probability ratio. Now this log probability ratio, when we take the expectation of that under, under uh, Y and Z, we get the mutual information between Y and Z. And I guess I'm going to leave it up to you to use your formulas, drag them up from the earlier time to show that this is the mutual, that this expression is the mutual information between Y and Z. You can sort of, uh, what's happening here is that this is the, um, this is going to be the, the entropy of Z minus the entropy of Z given Y. And the entropy of Z given Y is going to be smaller. Now, uh, mutual information can be written as a KL divergence. And KL divergence is always non-negative, even if it's differential KL divergence. So what we've done here is made this a quote, legitimate rate measurement of rate. Um, it's the rate that information about Y uh, goes into Z. So remember we're using Z is analogous to the compressed version and we're using noise to sort of limit the amount of information in the compressed version. Um, and because we're using noise, we get some amount of, and hopefully some finite amount of information, even if Y contains an infinite amount of information from its, from its real numbers, there's only a finite amount of information that makes it from Y to Z because the noise has destroyed the precision in the real numbers. And, but at a very general level, this is just a mutual information. It's guaranteed to be non-negative. And we still have the distortion, which is guaranteed to be non-negative. But this now becomes completely differentiable. We can take the gradient, we can sample Y and sample epsilon and take the gradient of this because everything's now a nice smooth computable function. And we're getting the, we're get, and that's gonna give us the gradient under expectation of this objective function. Um, so we're viewing this mutual information as the amount of information that passes from Y into Z. And then we have to reconstruct the image from Z to measure the distortion. So we've got a finite information channel from Y to the compressed version Z back to the distortion. Um, now, uh, it's just worth pointing out that um, I've written this as an arbitrary function of an image. This is, we compute Z by combining an image with noise. So the, the typical way this is done is you take the noise um, from a unit Gaussian, a Gaussian with zero mean um, and, uh, and the identity covariance matrix. So this is a vector. Um, this is a random vector drawn from a high dimensional Gaussian, spherical Gaussian with unit variance in, in each direction. Um, and then I can take this noise and reshape it, right? If I, if I take each component of this vector and multiply it by a variance and add a mean, then the, the, this becomes randomly distributed uh, as a Gaussian with this mean and uh, a covariance matrix with its diagonal, where these are the diagonal elements of the covariance matrix. This is Hadamard product. So I can take um, I can take a fixed distribution on the noise and the first thing I can do with it is reshape it. Now this mean and this covariance is still computed from the image. Um, okay, so uh, the point here is that conceptually we're drawing noise whose distribution is independent of the population, is independent of the parameters of our model. Um, Okay, uh, this rate distortion autoencoder has a problem. The problem is that to write the mutual information here, I have to write this in terms of uh, this marginal distribution on Z. And I was a little bit misleading on the earlier slide. I said we had this nice differentiable function. It is a differentiable function, but we can't compute this marginal distribution on Z. Um, so what we're gonna do instead is uh, approximate this marginal distribution on Z with a computable model such that this model is gonna have the property that for any given value of Z, we can compute uh, the density of, at that point for Z. Um, and, what we're, and, and this approximate model is going to give us an upper bound on the actual amount of mutual information. 
So this is how this goes. It's pretty simple. So this is a, we're gonna give a variational bound on mutual information generally, right? So I'm interest, if I'm interested in the mutual information between Y and Z, um, we, that can be written this way. Um, this is H, this is gonna be H of Z minus H of Z given Y, if you write it out in terms of a difference of entropies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace this thing that I can't compute by something that I can compute, right? This is the model. And then what I, all I've done is I've um, multiplied and divided by this. So this becomes plus this expression. And this expression uh, can be written as a KL divergence, as a negative KL divergence. If I negate it, remember I'm, um, here this is just on Z. So the, the sampling distribution is just the, the true um, marginal onto Z. Um, and anyway, when I negate it, it becomes a KL divergence. So it's minus this KL divergence between the true marginal, from the true marginal to our model marginal. But the point is this can't, this has to be non-negative. KL divergence, even in the differential case is non-negative. <coughs> so that means this, <coughs> this piece of it must be greater than or equal to the original value. <coughs> Sorry. So we get this inequality. This is a variational upper bound on the mutual information. The mutual information can be no larger than <clears throat> the expectation over images and noise of this ratio, where now we're assuming that both of these probabilities can be computed. We saw that it's in the typical case, this is a Gaussian centered at something computed from Y and with the diagonal covariance matrix also computed from Y. <clears throat> And in that case, we can, it's easy to calculate for any given Z, this probability density. Our model, it's, it's also common to take the model of Z to be Gaussian, in which case we get um, a ratio of Gaussians. And that KL divergence for a ratio of Gaussians has a closed form solution that we'll mention um, later on. Um, so this is our noisy channel RDA, right? We're looking for, our optimization problem is to find um, a system of parameters. And again, all of these parameters are cooperative. They're all trying to minimize this objective function. So I'm only gonna use one fee for all the different parts of the model. <clears throat> and that, that lets the parts share parameters. Um, so this is our objective function. It's an expectation over drawing, uh, say images, Y, some continuous values, some noise, of this probability where now we're using a model and this is also parameterized. Um, presumably the parameters that are used here are different from the parameters that are used here, but they're both, both included in phi. Um, and uh, so we've got this um, upper bound on the amount of information that's being passed from Y to Z. This is, this is an upper bound on the um, um, channel capacity of, of the channel from Y to Z. How many, how many bits of information make it from Y to Z? And we've got a standard distortion measure. So here's our picture. We, take, we draw Y and epsilon at random. Given Y and epsilon, we deterministically compute Z. Um, it's, it's Z of Y and epsilon. Um, then given Z, we uh, deterministically compute a reconstruction. And then we deterministically measure the distortion between this reconstruction and this original image. Now, um, if I assume if this is a Gaussian model, right? If this, this approximation to the marginal on Z is a, Gaussian, uh, is a Gaussian, then another thing I can do is I can sample from Z and generate an image. Now, in a, in a, in a, if you go back to the original, um, well, let's just, let me just point that out. You can sample from Z and you get an image. And, um, this is, this is from um, a standard um, uh, variational autoencoder actually, but it's essentially a rate distortion autoencoder, um, noisy channel rate distortion autoencoder. And you're seeing samples of images. Now, we started in the last unit by talking about image compression. This is not image compression, right? Um, this is taking the compressed file, randomly generating it, Actually, in this case, it's, a, it's a, a Gaussian distribution that we're thinking of as analogous to the compressed file. It has a finite amount of information from the original image. We're taking that 
in what, what we're thinking of as a compressed file, generating a random compressed file and decompressing it. So what we're seeing is the decompression of noise. And if everything was perfect, um, uh, if we had a perfect model, what we would be seeing here is, is very realistic faces, which again manages to do. Um, but it's, it's worth pointing out that if we go back to the original rate distortion autoencoder, where we're taking, a, where we're compressing an image to a, a compressed file, if that was being done losslessly, right, so that the original image could be con con constructed exactly, but using Shannon's coding theorem, the number of bits in the compression would be uh, the entropy of that. Um, let's assume the images were discrete for a moment would be the entropy of the images. Then if it's, if it's all working perfectly and that's a good code, then the codes are effectively random. If you looked at the probability distribution over the codes, you would, they would look random and they would be random because they're optimal. They cannot be further compressed. So they have to be random. And what that means is if I picked a random compressed file, if everything was perfect and I picked a random compressed file, I would get a realistic image. So, um, in principle, we should be modeling the distribution over images and able to generate images from that distribution by generating random compressed files and generating the image from them. Um, so there's another technicality that um, uh, I'm not gonna go through in detail, but that is if we're assuming that uh, our, the, the distribution, the marginal distribution here onto Z, this P hat of Z is a Gaussian, then um, you, can assume, you can further assume without loss of generality that it's a normalized Gaussian, that this distribution is just um, a, a zero mean um, uh, normal if it's the same in all directions, the same variance in all directions, spherical Gaussian distribution. Um, and you can show without loss of generality that the two sides of this network, you can add just a little coordinate transformation on both sides that um, allows, that, that forces this to be a normal Gaussian. So it, in standard practice, you always take this, um, let's go back to this picture. You always take this distribution or it's typically typical to take this distribution to always be a normal Gaussian. And this distribution has to learn how to adapt to make such that the marginal becomes the, no, the normal Gaussian. And um, this is just a bunch of, sorry. Here we just have a bunch of slides um, that go through that derivation. And I'm not gonna go through them in detail. Um, okay, so what have we done? We've taken our, our um, rate distortion autoencoder, which was originally viewed as an image compression system, and we've replaced the discrete compressed file by a continuous variable that nonetheless contains only a finite amount of information from the original input. And we can control um, how much information is in, let's go back to, we can control how much information we use by varying this lambda parameter, um, which this lambda parameter is saying how much we care about the distortion. The more we care about the distortion, the more information we're gonna have to keep about the image. Um, so we've got this, we still have this rate distortion trade-off, but the rate is a mutual information rather than a file length. We're using noise rather than rounding. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Thanks.